Right now, I'm gonna show you how you can optimize your Google shopping feed so that you can increase the performance of your shopping campaigns. And to be clear, when I say increase the performance, I mean increase the number of sales that you're getting for your business. This video will be relevant for anyone who is using Google Shopping or Performance Max campaigns that are using a shopping feed. Now, when it comes to optimizing your shopping feed, you need to understand that the main way that you achieve this is by updating the product titles either in your Google Merchant Center or in your store. Say for example, if you're using a Shopify store. And the reason for why this is so important is because in the shopping feed ads, Google targets those ads, so your ads are triggered by your product titles. As you may know, the core difference between a search result and a shopping result is that in shopping campaigns or shopping feed-based campaigns, you're not entering in keywords like you do in a search campaign. You're not telling Google which keywords you want your ads to appear for. Rather, Google is getting that information from your core product information, including your product titles. So that's why it's so important that you have your product titles set correctly so that Google clearly knows the type of search queries to trigger your ad. For. Now, before we get into this process, let me just go through two quick things. Firstly, a lot of the steps that I'm gonna be taking you through is part of my Google Ads e-commerce optimization checklist. And this is an important checklist which takes you through all of the different aspects of how to optimize your shopping and performance max campaigns, including how to review your product titles. So if you wanna know how to correctly optimize your shopping and performance max campaigns in 2024, just follow that link in the description below so you can get free access to my Google Ads e-commerce optimization checklist. And then secondly, I also wanna take you through a brief discussion between Google Shopping and performance max campaigns so that you know which ones you should be using for your e-commerce brand in 2024. And that's where we're gonna start. Now, one thing I wanna make really, really clear is that Google Shopping campaigns are still really relevant in 2024. And in fact, if I was starting a brand new Google Ads campaign for an e-commerce brand, I would actually be starting with Google Shopping and not Performance Max. Now, the reason for that is because Performance Max can be a really powerful asset for you and your business but you don't wanna start there. And the reason for that is because Performance Max was built with one thing in mind, and that was to achieve more conversions for your business. And a big way that this works is that Google looks at the current conversion data in your account, and it doesn't only leverage off the search terms, it also looks at the audience data and their behaviors, and it essentially builds a customer persona. And then from there, it starts reaching out to similar audiences and similar users, and goes through and shows your brand and your products to people who may not even be searching for your products yet, or they may not even be aware of your brand. So as you can see, the problem there is that if you start directly with Performance Max and you don't have that conversion data already in your Google Ads account, Google has not got any basis of data to start with, and that's where you hear a lot of these issues where Performance Max is really expensive and it takes a long time to see results. So if you're new to the Google Ads eco space for your brand, I'll be starting with Google Shopping, and I wouldn't even think about moving over to a Performance Max campaign until you've got at least 30 conversions in 30 days. So as a simple rule that you've had a month where you've got on average at least one conversion a day. So if you're new, you wanna start with Google Shopping, and then from there, you can build out some Performance Max campaigns built around your best performing product categories. And right now, I also wanna address a common question that we are getting right now is that people are asking, you know, can you use shopping campaigns and performance max campaigns in the same account? And my answer to that is yes, but, and it is a big but, I just wanna explain what I mean by this. Yes, you can use these two campaigns together and let me explain to you some different scenarios that I would use them together. One of the most common areas is that you use your Performance Max campaign, but then when you're setting up that Performance Max campaign, you select that you want it to only target new users. But to be able to do that, you've already got to have some audience data of over a thousand individual lists. And those lists would be your website visitors, your cart abandoners, your previous converters. So what you're doing there is you're adding all of those lists to your Performance Max campaign. So Performance Max doesn't target those and you're focusing Performance Max to go out and find new customers that are not current customers. Another step from there, I would also add my own brand on the excluded brand lists. And then you have a secondary shopping campaign, which is just targeting those users. So you've got it on two levels, your Performance Max going for new customers, and you've got your shopping campaign coming behind and doing that retargeting, remarketing, and it can even help to be a little bit defensive so that you don't have any competitors that are trying to build in 
on your brand reputation. And then the second main reason for why I would use Performance Max and Shopping Together is that if you see within your Performance Max campaign that the vast majority of your spend is being spent on the search network and you don't have much coverage in the shopping network. Now, as funny as this seems, this actually can be quite common because what happens with Performance Max campaigns is that they will then to start to target where they're getting better results. So if they're getting better results for your e-commerce brand in the search network, it will very quickly move all budget across to your search network, leaving you very thin in terms of spend on your shopping network ads. And that's a case where we then go through and add in a shopping campaign to really bolster up our visibility on the shopping network. Now, a quick way of how to check that. Many people aren't aware that you can run a simple report in Google Ads to check this. Yes, you can do it through external scripts. No, I, I'm not against using external scripts, but I find the easiest way for me is to go firstly into your individual Google Ads campaign, just select the last month's data and look at how much you spent over the last month. Then from there, you want to go into insights and reports, making sure you only selected one campaign. And then you want to go into reports, and then you wanna select a report called shopping products. And then just scroll down to the bottom and you'll see the total cost that you've spent on the shopping feed. And if you see that that amount is quite low, that's when you would then go through and add in that supporting shopping campaign. And then the follow on question that we get a lot of the time is, you know, what do we use? Are we using more Performance Max or more shopping? And to be honest, it really comes down to the individual account performance. And we've got both cases. We've got clients that perform better in shopping. We've got other clients that perform really, really well in Performance Max. And it's also bringing in a lot of new customers. So as I said, if we're onboarding a new client and this is their first sort of foray into Google Ads, we would start with a combination of search and shopping campaigns. And then we would look at the core product categories and we would then build out performance max campaigns based around those core product categories. What we generally find is that we have two or three performance max campaigns focused on individual product categories. And then we have supporting shopping campaigns, which are targeting any other products that aren't part of that Performance Max campaign. And then we also have supporting dynamic search campaigns, which are targeting those core product categories. And as I said, there are some exceptions to the rule there, like the example I gave earlier, where we do have some clients that their Performance Max campaign is really swayed towards Google search. And in those cases, we then don't have a supporting dynamic search campaign, we have a supporting shopping campaign. But the biggest thing that I want to stress is just be open and really look at the different types of campaigns and work out what is working best for your business. If you're getting amazing results with your shopping campaign and it's continuing to grow, don't feel like you've got to switch across to Performance Max. You can stay in shopping as long as you're continuing to see those good results. But if you do see some stagnation in your results, and this is quite common with shopping, you can see a reduction in your clicks and impressions. And this can come about if you've got a lot of your competitors using Performance Max, because Performance Max uses a lot of automated bidding, it can just quickly outbid and come over the top of your shopping campaign. Finding that happens, you do then need to move over to Performance Max. So with all that said, the main thing is, is that just know how each of them work, know the different structures, and then you can use the combination of campaigns which works best for your business. All right, I know we've gone through a lot, but now let's get to the actual issue of hand. And it was really important that we did go through those items so you get a really core cool picture of what I'm talking about here. But now I wanna get into how to go through and optimize your product shopping feeds. And as I said at the top of this video, this is a really, really important task. And to be honest, it's probably something that is not done enough in this day and age. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna jump into a screen share and I'm gonna take you through two different items. First, I'm gonna take you through some of the product title formulas you can use. And then we're gonna jump into Google Ads so I can actually show you how to review your products and also find out from your account data what keywords you should be inserting into your product titles. So let's now jump into that screen share right now. Alrighty, so firstly, just what I wanna point out here is that similar to Google Search, the good news is that with Google Shopping, the highest bid does not always win because with Google Shopping, it takes three factors into account and that is your bid, your relevance, and also marketplace factors. So Obviously with the bid, that could be your max CPC, or if you're using a target ROAS or a target CPA, that will affect the bid that you're submitting for that auction. Then there's also marketplace factors. Now marketplace factors is everything from your Google shopping scores. So your returns policy to your reviews, also to how your ads are stacking up versus your competitors. And what we really wanna focus on here is the relevance. And that's what we're talking about when we go through our product titles. We're really looking to really make sure 
sure that our products are the most relevant to what people are actually searching. Remember, with any type of Google Ads campaign, that's really what it's looking at. It's trying to match the user's search term with the most relevant ad. All right, so now let's go through how we can actually increase your ad rank through that relevance. Remember, we are focusing on our product titles so that we can increase the relevance of our ads. What we want to be made clear here is that by focusing on your product title, you can greatly increase your relevance and ultimately the number of times your ad is shown. So what you want to make sure is that when you're creating your product titles or you're looking to optimize your product titles, always use a clear formula. Now I'm going to share what the formula that I do use. Now obviously, especially if you are running Google Ads for a client, you do know that sometimes this is going to be some give and take because sometimes you get some clients that are just really, really super strong on their branding. And so they may want to use a different formula to this. And if that's the case, what I just really suggest is that you just really look to take that business on a journey and really look to give them the most relevant data so that you can actually build a real clear case for why they need to look at their product titles. Firstly, you would use the product name, which is also gonna be the most common search term. You would then add in the brand name, then the keyword targets, and then you also add in the product modifiers. So whether that would be you know, the sizing, the materials. Now, one of the things that is quite common, you would see that it's quite common that the product name and the keyword targets are gonna be very, very similar. And if that's the case, you would then just have the product name, the brand name, and then the product modifiers. And to be honest with you, more often than not, this is the the formula that we use because most of the times you do see that the product name is really, really similar to the keyword target. But sometimes you might have an initial keyword, which would be the product name, and then you may want to add in some other keyword targets after that brand name. So first, what I want to show you here is this is a campaign where we made some updates to their product titles on the 25th of October. And what I'm showing you here is the date range of 30 days before and 30 days after. And you can see through here is that we saw a good increase in the clicks and impressions and also an increase in their conversion value. What I want to do now from here is I also want to take you into three individual products. Now, as we go into these individual products, there will be some smaller grabs of data, but what I want you to see is that we made this change across a whole product category, and this is the core results of that total product category. So what I want to show you in through here is you can see this first example. Once again, we made this change on the 25th of October. So you can see from here, there was a big influx in, in clicks and impressions. Same thing here again, once again, 25th of October, a big increase in clicks and impressions. And the same thing here again, you can see across all of these products, once we made those product total updates, we saw this really big increase in clicks and impressions. Now let's get to how do we get that data and how do we know what changes to make? What we did is, and what I recommend for you to do is to go into insights and reports. And then when you're in your insights, now this is for performance max campaigns. So you wanna be going into your consumer spotlight and go into your viewed detailed report and this will then show you the search terms and you want to just basically match these search terms and add them into your product titles or if you're in a shopping campaign you can go into insights and reports and then you'll see search terms in here and then you can review that same data so to clarify what we're doing there when we're going through and reviewing the insights or our search terms data is we want to look at what search terms that users are using which is generating the most impressions and then from there what we want to do is we want to go to our product titles and if there's overwhelming more traffic around a different keyword or a slightly different product title you would then insert that into your product title and on those individual examples I showed you that those simple changes that we made how it gave us a really big increase in the total clicks impressions and also conversion values so that's the way that you go through and review your shopping feed especially around your product titles so that you can increase your ad relevance for your shopping campaigns and also your performance max campaigns that have that active shopping feed. So thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. As always, it's great to have you here and remember to follow that link in the description below so that you can grab my e-commerce optimization checklist. And with all of these different types of optimizations, you're only gonna be getting the best results as long as you're using the correct structure and setup for your campaigns. And if you wanna make sure that you've got your shopping campaigns set up correctly in 2024, go through and watch this video right here. Or if you wanna make sure that you're using the correct setup for your Performance Max campaigns, go and watch this video right here. Once again, see you next time.